So, uh, I was wrong. It was not a null pointer dereference. And we know that because CrowdStrike released a blog post, Technical Details Falcon Content Update for Windows Host, where they explicitly say this is not related to null bytes contained within channel file 291 or any other channel file. It was actually a logic error. Or in other words, it was the dev's fault. <laughs> the dev and basically anybody else involved in the system that allowed something like this to get through. I mean, shouldn't there be unit tests, integration tests, static code analysis to detect potential logic errors, memory safe tests to check for invalid memory access, including null pointers and uninitialized memory, we'll get to that in a sec, or this blog post is entire cover up and you can believe any of the litany of conspiracies that have been laid out on the internet. Was this a pre-run for election fraud? Were they trying to delete certain data from federal computers? Or was this a test run of the shadowy cabal of elites running the World Economic Forum, which is a CrowdStrike partner. Like, what is going on here? Mm, this is all we got. A configuration update triggered a logic error resulting in a system crash and blue screen of death on impacted systems. Which is still going on, by the way. I took this picture at the airport on Monday evening. Yeah, Delta's having some serious problems. Now, these configuration files that were updated are referred to as channel files, and the channel file in question is 291 which controls how Falcon evaluates named pipe execution on Windows systems. In the specificity of channel file 291, where it says it's not related to null bytes contained within that file or any other channel file, is that the logic error occurred by updating the content in channel file 291. Now for context, these channel files are configuration files for the CrowdStrike Falcon sensor, which runs in the background in your machine, look for security threats and handling them accordingly. And the configuration files contain rules for new potential attacks for the sensor to look for, but here's the kicker. Because they are not kernel drivers or anything, they can be updated easily and regularly, which they are, <laughs> several times a day. So if this is routine, if this happens several times a day, how in the world do you not have systems in place that prevent something like this from happening in the first place? You know, like, it's one thing. You can kind of give someone the benefit of the doubt if it's like a, something that is a one-off thing. But several times a day, updates like this occur, and this makes it through? A logic error, where you're not giving us any more information than a logic error, this logic flaw? We understand how this issue occurred, and we are doing a thorough root cause analysis to determine how this logic flaw occurred. Translation, we're trying to figure out how to, how to release a more detailed statement that doesn't give us a PR and legal nightmare more so than we're already in. That's that's basically what this is. Now, a guy named Zach Voorhees had the most popular tweet thread regarding this entire situation, where he confidently stated it was a null pointer from the memory unsafe C++ language, and he is a professional C++ programmer. And after standing on his business after being called out otherwise, he said, to fact check in a nutshell, it's not a null pointer dereference, it's a null pointer dereference with extra steps. Even saying that CrowdStrike came out and released a technical report confirming my analysis, his analysis that is, and that would be the technical report that we just read, which does not confirm that. And then a fellow named Tavis, who is a vulnerability researcher at Google, which I love this battle, the Google whistleblower versus the Google employee, but he said the strange tweet got over 25,000 retweets the author, author sounds confident, but basically he's wrong, kind of. That's effectively what he said. He stated this code is reading pointers from a table in a loop and some are invalid. Perhaps an error parsing a configuration file left some entries uninitialized. And then Robert Graham, who you may or may not know, I don't, said we're all being lazy here. He said Tavis is right about the structure access when accessing a structure member immediately, but sometimes we grab a pointer to a structure member then pass it somewhere else. In other words, using a member of a null pointer struct happens in one part of the code where we add this to that, but then dereference in another where we try to access what's at 9C. So the initial claim of dereferencing null isn't actually proven wrong. And then Patrick Wardle saw a different pointer being dereferenced. And uh, well, that's all we got for now. Everything else is up in the air until we actually get more information on the actual code, the actual files. But that's probably the last video I'm going to cover on it. If there's any more information, I'll put it on the newsletter, my newsletter, devnotesdaily.com. Other than that, I don't know. If you like this content, subscribe. 